and welcome to What's Going On Anyway with me, your host, Anne Headley, and I use the I Ching and other of my favorite forms of divination to look into two-week segments at a time and make sense of things and share that with you. And I'm asking these questions for not just myself, which I do as a daily practice, but for all of us, anyone that might be listening uh, to give us guidance and support and yet another way of inquiring and finding self-inquiry and community with questions that come up for all of us. So with this reading, I am going a little bit back in time. So this is different than the other ones where the other ones are forecasting. And this is me looking backwards because I just wanted to start with January. So the January full wolf moon was January 6th. I'm talking to you now in February. And I asked the question because it wasn't a what are these next two weeks in store but what's the best hexagram for me to talk about in relationship to this January 6th moon and what I got was hexagram 34 moving to hexagram 32 and in the next uh, reading I'll talk a little bit more about hexagrams and casting through the I Ching, but today I want to talk about these hexagrams and and keep going. So can you remember back to the beginning of January and how you were feeling after the start of this year? And I know what was happening for me um, as I was going into the new year. I was having a lot of feelings about what 2022 was for me and how I didn't have a lot to mm, I didn't have a lot that I could look at and say I had made these great accomplishments there were a lot of personal inner accomplishments I did a lot of great therapy work in 2022 (laughs) Um, But on the outside, to me, it didn't look like a year where I could say, now look at this, this is this really happened for me. And I was also disappointed because last year was a a year of a tiger of the tiger and I am a tiger. And I look forward to these tiger years. I had one amazing tiger year in 1998. And I keep looking for that incredible year where everything sort of sparkles and shines and things go my way. So anyway, that didn't happen for me in 2022, or at least not the way I was looking for that. I keep looking for these out these senses of outer accomplishment to to ground myself into a feeling of of worthiness, really. I didn't do much with what I think of as my career, my outer work in the world, all of that felt something of a disappointment to me but on the other hand the inner work that I was doing the career that I have in my interiority did quite well I learned a lot about what my real real boundaries are not just boundaries where I feel uncomfortable but boundaries where I really flourish when I have those set set up in my life and that was sort of new for me this idea of I could actually create a life around my flourishing and somehow that's something that feels like turning from the inside out. Um, I always, before this, had the sense that I would take care of everything and everyone else and then I would attend to that inner flourishing or hope that it would catch up alongside that. I think I talk about this a lot, so maybe this will be a theme that shifts uh, through this year. That might be nice. So the hexagram that came up um, is called Great Vigor, hexagram 34. And 
the que the key questions and again this is the um, where's the book here it is my favorite um, interpretation of the I Ching is by Hillary Barrett uh, I have lots that I use and I usually go between three or four uh, books and and I will talk about those later and link them so that if you are actually interested in doing this too you can have your own resources what you can do is go to onlineclarity.co.uk and Hillary Barrett has a whole incredible website full of information um, and you can do your own readings there and really there's no wrong question to ask it's just really unhelpful to ask a yes or no question from the I Ching you can try it but it's you won't get a whole lot of clarity there so the key questions that come up with great vigor is how will you use your power and where do you stand um, and so that is how we sort of started this year with great vigor you stand upright and robust full of resilient energy you're inspired and animated by strong purpose and ready to wield your strength like a hero I mean I really keep looking for that moment when like here I am and I have this to offer and I have so many different interests and so many different directions and I I keep wishing for a way to focus that or find something that pulls all of my interests into one one thing and the changing line says vigor in the toes setting out to bring order pitfall there is truth and confidence now let me read the interpretation of that line because that's when I really it made sense to me when I when I found that and the interpretation of line one from Hillary Barrett is and this to me described me perfectly in the beginning of January it's as if you were bouncing on the balls of your feet full of nervous energy eager to get underway and start making things happen the problem is that vigor in your toes is not at all the same thing as clarity in your vision you know absolutely the intensity of your own feeling you do not have the same understanding of your changing environment if you forge ahead regardless it will all come to grief acting merely because you can act is not a good guiding principle it is enough to be aware sure and true here and now without trying to bring your world into order you, you know that just answers everything for me I had this sense of I better get my classes in order and I better have all of these offerings and if I don't do it now I'm gonna miss the window of the beginning of the year and then the astrologers that I was listening to were forecasting that slow January nothing's really gonna happen if you try you won't get anywhere so all of that really made sense to me and I think still the astrologers are saying that nothing really is going to happen for us until March so it might be a slow February too although honestly I can feel some shifts now mid February I can feel that things are hmm, getting in line in front of the door the door is not open but things are getting in line in front of the door and the hexagram moved to hexagram 32 which is lasting uh, sometimes it's called duration what inspiration are you making real in your daily life and wasn't January about getting a routine going this there's always this feeling at the beginning of a year of what changes will I make what will I do and honestly for me my January was about insisting on rest as part of my routine how can you continue on the same path even as you adapt so how can I keep going in the direction that I want to be going with my life with my art with my ideals around teaching and money making how can I do that as I adapt to the changing world 
And the next question is, who will you become by persevering in this? And I say back, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who I will become. I guess I'll still be me. And I really love this interpretation of the oracle. Or, and in with the I Ching, you are asking an oracle, which is a the great unknown, the great unknown, invisible divine is the oracle that gives back the answers that you seek. So this one is again from Hillary Barrett. Whatever becomes part of the heart's circling journey will last. We bind things, influences, ideas, people into the fabric of our lives by integrating them into the daily round of our way of living so that they are carried with us through change. This is an active, creative process, keeping the channels always open for exchange between inspiration and reality, lasting tirelessly on your own path. Whatever landscapes it travels through is not a mistake. What lasts bears fruit not because you arrive at some final destination, but because through all the changes, you persevere in your intent and inspiration, and you are always finding ways to make it real. Isn't that lovely? Always finding ways to make your intent and inspiration real. So that's the beginning of the month of January. That's the beginning of this year, 2023, that underneath those tapping feet, that anxiousness to get on with it anyway. And don't we all feel anxious about these past years? There's often talk of, when will life get back to normal as if normal was the way we wanted it. So we're creating this whole new world together. And we're also anxious for it to feel regular and normal again, as if that will make us feel better. You know, it's sort of just when anxiety comes up, we look to anything to soothe that. And we have all the tools that we need to soothe our anxiety. And it doesn't mean having answers to what this new life, new world, new earth looks like for all of us. So that's January. I'm going to pull a couple of cards for, for us right in the moment. These are, this is a combination. I have a bowl in my studio and I've got angel cards and yoga cards and so let's see what we've got. Courage. Love. Ease. I think I need one more. And communication. Okay, those are those cards. Courage. Love. Ease. Communication. Yep. And because I like these, I'm going to pull one of these um, <laughs> soul lessons cards. Yeah. So this one that came up is don't push the envelope. So don't push the envelopes. I feel like that goes along with that idea of you're not going to be able to do what you, <laughs> what you want to do out there, tapping your toes, anxious for what is to come right now is not the time to push the envelope. And that's January. I wonder when it will be the time to push the envelope. Maybe we will see here. So thank you for listening in on this part of the readings, January Wolf Moon, January 6th, 2023. And join me next time for the new moon January 21st. Again, that reading will be in retrospect. So that's an interesting way to do it as well. Be well. I'll see you soon. Bye.
Patricia, are you aware of what's happening? No, ma'am, I don't know what's going on, but I'm awake.